Hi, Shalom, Shalom, Israel. First and foremost, I would like to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High God, Yahweh, Bashem, Hamashiach, and Malak Yahweh Shah. Yahweh is the name of the Heavenly Father, who the world calls God, and Yahweh Shah is the name of His beloved Son, who the world calls Jesus Christ, whom is the Savior of the nation of Israel. It's Brother Malachi out of the WFI Detroit camp, coming at you with another cold cut. And his cold cut is entitled, Repent from Witchcraft. Repent from witchcraft. So, in today's time and even during the days of old, our people have become caught up in witchcraft. Idolatry, sorcery, divination, dealing with familiar spirits, engaging in enchantments, and doing all manner of evil in the sight of the Lord. Right? So our people, even in today's time, they deal with tarot cards. They deal with their horoscope, astrology. And the Lord said that we are not to go into that left-handed knowledge. Right? So that's going to be a quick video through the spirit of Pai Yahabash Shah. And most high willing, this is edifying to the elect. All right. Let's grab a few precepts. So let's get um Genesis chapter 1 and verse 14. And it reads, And God said, So I can bear with me. And God said, Let there be light in the firmament of the heaven to the so like it to divide the day from the night and let them be for signs and for seasons and for days and years right so the lord created the sun the moon and the stars thereof for a sign of the world to let us so like it to let us know we living in the end that's why you have blood moons you have the sun being turned into darkness as it states to joel the second chapter so the sun and the moon gives off knowledge so you got man that takes the knowledge from the sun and the moon and they create it or use it for corruptible things. They use it for the sake of wickedness. But nonetheless, the sun and the moon was created to be for signs, for seasons and for days and years. Right. So we use these things on the right hand side. It give us knowledge on irrigation, the changing of the seasons, so on and so forth. But man uses these things for his own wicked agenda. Let's get Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. This is Daniel chapter 2, verse 21. <clears throat> and it reads, And he changeth the times and the seasons. He removeth kings and setteth up kings. He giveth wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. So the heavenly father, he changeth the times and seasons. All right. And again, he uses the sun, the moon, and the stars to determine those certain things when it comes to nature the changing of the times irrigation so on and so forth so the sun moon and star give off knowledge and um and that's why the lord said the sun is going to be darkened because he's going to bring about a famine of the word so this is matthew chapter 24 verse 29 <clears throat> it say immediately after the tribulation of those days Shall the sun be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven, and the powers of the heaven shall be shaken. All right. So that's playing upon tables. The Lord said he's going to withdraw wisdom, knowledge, and understanding from the earth. Let's get another precept on that in Micah chapter 3 and verse 6. And these are all precepts proving that the sun and the moon represents knowledge and wisdom. So this is Micah chapter 3 and verse 6. Therefore night shall be unto you, that ye shall not have a vision. And it shall be dark unto you, that ye shall not divine. And the sun shall go down over the prophets, and the day shall be dark over them. Okay. So the point I'm making is, man uses the knowledge from the sun and the moon and creates or turns it into a corruptible thing by way of going into astrology tarot horoscopes and all manner of evil 
So the Lord told us not to go into these things. Let's get that in Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. And it's not going to be too deep of a video. We're just touching on the commandments of the Lord. So this is Leviticus chapter 19, verse 31. Regard not them that have familiar spirits, neither seek after wizards to be defiled by them. I am the Lord your God. So you cannot seek after wizards. You got a lot of wizards on the earth. Your rapper is a damn wizard. Or your favorite rapper. Your damn uh your damn local drug dealer. He's a wizard. Let's look up that word wizard. Wizard. It's a, a man who has magical powers, especially in legends and fairy tales. Sorcerer, warlock. Well, this is not a fairy tale. And this is not a damn legend. This is real life. You got men who have power on the left-hand side. Just as they did in ancient Egypt. Let's get that in Exodus chapter 7, verse 11. This is Exodus chapter 7, and verse 11. Then Pharaoh also called the wise men and the sorcerers. Now the magicians of Egypt, they also did in like manner with their enchantments. For they cast down every man his rod and they became serpents. But Aaron's rod swaddled up their rods. See, Aaron had spiritual power on the right hand side coming from the heavenly father. But these Egyptians, they were dealing with the left handed side. Magic. Hoodoo voodoo sorcery and all manner of evilness so they cast a rod down and they became a snake so this is real life so the wise men of egypt are the sorcerers and egyptians on the left hand side and even america deals with sorcery because america was built on witchcraft right the founding fathers of america so-called founding fathers were freemasons george washington this is Nahum chapter 3 and verse 4. Because of the multitude of the whoredoms of the well-favored harlot, the mischief of witchcraft that sell of nations through her whoredoms and families through her witchcrafts. Right? You got a lot of occultic practices done by these Edomites in high places. Let's get that in Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. And the Edomites are the so-called white people. Your politician is a damn witch and a warlock, right? The up there in Bohemian Groove, drinking baby blood, popping each other, and doing all manner of wicked rituals. Just as the Canaanites did in the days of old, we read Rizm of Solomon, chapter 12, and verse 3 on down. So this is Ephesians chapter 6 and verse 12. For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. So you got spiritual wickedness in high places, right? When you read Daniel the 10th chapter, it goes into the principalities on the left-hand side in the spiritual realm. You got certain demons and spirits that rules over certain jurisdictions and regions of the earth. And this takes place in the spiritual realm. So you got a high level demon and sorcery over America. You got the Baphomet demon. That's the spirit of homosexuality and, and, and androgynous wickedness. So this is Ephesians chapter two and verse one. And you have he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins. It say, where in time past you walk according to the course of this world According to the prince of the power of the air, that spirit that now work, worketh in the children of disobedience. So that prince of the power of the air is going into the spiritual demon Satan. All right. And also you got on, um, I believe, Mark three twenty two. You say, and the scribes which came down from Jerusalem said, He have Beelzebub. And by the prince of the devils cast of he out devils. Now, who is the prince of the devils? Satan. Because Satan is the Lord 
over all these different demons and spirits that goes to and fro the earth. And the name Beelzebub means Lord of the house. So Satan is the Lord over the house of the wicked. All right. So now let's go to Exodus chapter 22 and verse 18. It say, thou shall not suffer a witch to live. So the Lord said, kill and put to death a witch. This was their judgment in the ancient world. And witches and warlocks are going to get put to death in today's time. Lest they repent if they're Israelites. Now, if they're Israelites and they caught up into this witchcraft, they can repent from those evil works and come serve the Lord. Like those men did in Acts chapter 19, verse 19. This is Acts 19, 19. It say, many of them also which used curious arts, brought their books together and burned them before all men, and they counted the price of them and found it 50,000 pieces of silver. That was some big bucks back in the ancient world. These men had witchcraft books and they practiced sorcery. So they burnt all those books through the spirit and power of Yahweh Shem And that's what you gotta do to these tarot cards. You into this stuff, you gotta burn it. You have to stop worshiping the prince of devils. Because the scriptures say, man's goings are of the Lord. How can a man then understand his way? So if you got some damn cards determining your future, you have to really examine yourself and ask yourself, do you serve the Lord? Or are you serving the spiritual demon Satan? The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. So now, let's get Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 6. Bear with me. This is Deuteronomy chapter 20 and verse 6. Salakia, uh, that's not what I want. Um, I believe it's Leviticus 26. Leviticus chapter 20 and verse 6. And the soul that turneth after such as have familiar spirits and not the wizards to go a whoring after them, I will even set my face against that soul and will cut him off from among his people. So the Lord said you can't set your face to uh, uh, Salaki, set your face after the wizards and those that have familiar spirits. And you going a whoring after them because when you worship different gods, that's you playing the harlot. Because we're really married unto the Lord. So if you go after these different gods, that's like you going after different men. Which in terms make you a harlot. Okay. If a woman has multiple husbands, she's considered a harlot. All right. That's in Deuteronomy 23 and 17. So if you have multiple gods that you worship, that's you playing a harlot against the Lord. Because we're only supposed to worship Yahweh Shem Yahweh and him only. That's in Exodus chapter 20 and verse 3 and Deuteronomy chapter 6 and verse 4. Let's also get Deuteronomy chapter 18. In verse 9. This is Deuteronomy chapter 18 and verse 9. It say, When the when thou art coming to the land which the Lord thy God giveth thee, thou shalt not learn to do after the abominations of those nations. There shall not be found among you any one that maketh his son or his daughter to pass through the fire, or that useth divination, or an observer of times. Or an enchanter, or a witch, or a charmer, or consulted with familiar spirits, or a wizard, or a necromancer. And a necromancer is a person who deals with the dead. For example, that witch in Endor that raised up Samuel from the spiritual realm. She was a necromancer. For all that do these things are an abomination unto the Lord. Because of these abominations, the Lord thy God doth drive them out from before thee. So you can't be an, like an observer of times. Let's look up observer of times. And that's going into people who deal with their horoscopes and astrology. 
Now you had the Issacharites that understood the times on the right hand side. When you read First Chronicles chapter 12, verse 32. Right? An observer of times. <clears throat> It say an observer of times is someone who keeps dates. An example of this is someone celebrating their birthday. It is not a tradition of God's people. And St. Paul made this clear when writing to the Galatians, the Galatians 4 and 8 through 11. How be it that when you knew not God, you did service unto them, which by nature are no gods. Right? You see that? So... You can't celebrate your birthday. That's abomination. That's wicked. We read Genesis 40 and 20. That was a custom of the pharaohs of Egypt. And the Lord told us not to do after the ways of Egypt. Let's get that in Leviticus chapter 18, verse 3. So most high willing, this is all making sense to you brothers and sisters out there that's caught up in this. You have to stop dealing with tarot cards. Stop dealing with witchcraft. The Lord will destroy you if you continue in those practices. Leviticus 18 and 3. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where ye dwelt, shall ye not do. And after the doings of the land of Canaan, which I bring you, shall ye not do. Neither shall ye walk in their ordinances. So you cannot walk in the ordinances of the other nations. Right, so this is the tarot card origins, and um, I'm gonna just bring this out. It's a tarot decks were invented in Italy in 1430 in the 1430s by adding to the existing four suited pack a fifth suit of 21 specifically illustrated cards, triumphi, triumphus, and an old card, il motto, the fool. So this is madness. Did the Lord ever say deal with tarot cards? Right? Oh, check that out. Tarot translates to foolishness. Let me bring this out. It's a... The term tarot derives from... Terochi, an Italian word whose root te rock translate to foolishness. So tear it means foolishness. Right? So why would you want to engage in practices that's literally called foolishness? This is Proverbs chapter 24 and verse 9. The Lord said the thought of foolishness is sin and the scorner is an abomination to men. So foolishness is a sin in the eyes of the Lord. So that would make tarot cards a sin because literally it means foolishness. All right. So you have to forsake the wicked and forsake the foolish and live. Matter of fact, let me bring that out. This is Proverbs chapter 9 and verse 6. It say, forsake the foolish and live and go in the way of understanding. So you have to forsake, so like if forsake the tarot cards, forsake the witchcraft, forsake keeping your birthday and celebrating all kind of wickedness. And you have to live in the eyes of the Lord. So no birthdays, no reading tarot cards, no astrology, no reading your horoscope. You have to forsake the foolish and live, Israel. So with that, I'm going to give all praises, honor, and glorification to the Most High God, Yahweh, Shema Mashiach, Gomelach, Yahweh, Shah. I'm going to say Shalom.